Today actually was a very historic day in Kilmory because it was the official opening of the Independence Museum here, our new Independence Museum by the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, who initially was given the Michael Collins Oration in Bain Blah. He arrived here at about five o'clock and he officially opened the museum here. He arrived into the village and then he was escorted to the podium, conveyed to the podium, where he addressed the large assembly, and then he officially cut the tape to officially open the Independence Museum, and he then entered the museum with his wife, Sabina. Centenary of the Easter Rising. This fine museum building is a fitting monument to the founder members of the then Kilmurray Historical Society, who showed amazing vision and foresight in the early 1960s by collecting, curating, and exhibiting a remarkable collection of historical, archaeological, and social artifacts in the original Kilmurray Museum building up the road so generously donated by the Galvin family to our association down the decades. Thank you. Today I feel the presence of these founder members amongst us. And it's heartening to see that so many of their families and descendants are still active and making a valuable contribution to the ongoing development of our association. I know that today they would be immensely proud to see that their successors have continued to preserve, pre present, and expand our unique connection as they did themselves so many years ago. When the renovated farm building that housed the original museum began to fall into disrepair, putting the many valuable historical and archaeological artifacts from the area at risk, 
we in the association made a decision to build a new museum, incorporating a community facility, and re reverse the deterioration of, Kil of the, the then deterioration of Kilmory Village into a thriving and self-sustaining community and tourist attraction, and a vital component in the beautiful Lee Valley Heritage and Tourism Program. We felt that a new museum would make Kilmory a destination for the ever-growing numbers of history buffs. buffs. Its close proximity to King Michael, Ben the Blau, Cross Barry, and other wars of independent sites gave it a key role in telling our country's story in the decade of 1700. This new museum cost 546,000 to build, and after long and protract protracted negotiations, we received 410,000, which was the largest ever award made in West Cork. We received an individual donation of 25,000 and 69,000 from the community, which was truly amazing. <laughs> As you will see, the ground floor of our new development comprises two museum presentation rooms and a dedicated museum storeroom. The first floor provides seating accommodation for 80 people, together with reception, office, and catering facilities. It boasts a concert standard sound amplification system to facilitate music and other presentations. Owen Max Sweeney, a descendant of Charles Max Sweeney, the murdered Lord Mayor of Cork, is to be congratulated on the truly excellent job he has done on the museum design, not least in the way in which he has harmonized the building with the surrounding architecture and vernacular of Kilmory Village. Heritage consultants Theo Dalka and Aileen O'Connor, through their company Heritage Works, have delivered a tour de force in the design, interpretation, and construction of our new museum presentation. They have merged our eclectic and diverse collection of artifacts and ephemera into a coherent, creative, and provocative presentation, bringing to life the gripping story of an army men and women in this country and Excuse me. And in particular, our area did for this country in very difficult times in their quest to achieve national independence and self-government. This particularly during the turbulent years of the War of Independence. Everyone with any Irish blood in their veins needs to see and to hear these fabulous stories brought to life in our museum presentation. During the development of our museum, Conservation specialists were utilised, and whilst we were awarded a Heritage Council grant, this really only covered part of the considerable cost uh, of the exercise. The remedial programme was carried out in the main by our, our, our curating team, and is done in accordance with the Museum Standards Programme for Ireland set of standards. They spent long hours in this project, and as a result of their efforts, our collection is now fully documented labelled, cleaned, and stored to the highest professional standards. It is now a fact that the tourism sector can make a, mar a major contribution to Ireland's economic renewal, and this must be considered even more important in rural areas. Cultural tourism accounts for a large and increasing percentage of visitors to this island, and given that this part of County Cork has such a rich theme of history, we are confident that this new facility show, showcasing Ireland's past in an attractive and user-friendly and contemporary setting will become an important tourist and visitor destination. Last, but certainly not least, I would like to take the opportunity to particularly salute the grit and the tenacity of my fellow Kilmory Historical and Archaeological Association committee members in their dogged, in their dogged determination to preserve the museum collection in an environmentally suitable location, and and in addition, and a huge plus, provide a much needed community meeting facility.
special mention must be made, made of the selfless, tireless way in which these members, working together voluntarily for the past 10 years, have made the vision of this new museum and cultural centre the reality to see before you today. Thank you very much. I would now ask the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, to address the Assembly, please. Well, a good core, a Cahillicus Ari, is a good and a rockless, a cornorious, a good core of fog. It was running with their sauce on Boston, a good old mayor of other ship. Is interconfederate to the main venture, a Ockard Kibura Gagoskel on Museum Show. It's such a great pleasure to be here today for the opening of the Kilmurray Museum and Cultural Centre. And I'd like to thank the Kilmurray Historical and Archaeological Society for inviting me to join you. And indeed, it's me, the Mawita Sequalia, the Fagas, and Firkin Polsha, Ermahan Hain, and the Sarba Van Kain, and I do want to thank you all very, very much uh, for in this challenging weather for the warm welcome you have given to Sabina and I. Uh, the strong wind will relieve us from the rain for a while. Uh, I, I, I just think this is such an important occasion and it is one for congratulation, as you've heard, for the Historical and Archaeological Association not just for the 12 years in which it was fundraising until recently, but also for the long, long work by the founding members and all of those who came after, came after them. The village of Kilmurray has an, did indeed, is, has an important place in the story of Ireland's fight for independence, just as it is a few miles from Belnamar, the site of Michael Collins' assassination, where I've just been speaking today. Well, it was here that Terence McSweeney who played his own significant part in Ireland's journey towards independence was born. And how moving it is to think that a member of the McSweeney family is in fact an author of the architect who is of such assistance in designing this building, this wonderful facility, in such a sympathetic and efficient and beautiful way. So Tom, we can show you that you can incorporate in the museum of the museum of the culture of the museum Museum of William Ash Dornan Satir will San Toka. This is a purpose built museum, and I think that when we reflect back on those significant years between 1917 and 23, the Western Mid Cork regions can be seen to have played an important role in events that would change everything in Ireland. Yes, it will be a great resource for people who come to visit you, the Throsori, but it will be even more important for people of different generations to hear the story of all the different people who took part in these, in these decades, and also from before, because you have some wonderful architects from the very earliest times. For example, you have a unique bicycle in there, and those of you who are interested in history, the role of the bicycle in the War of Independence and in the Civil War has yet to be substantially written. It was one, but here you have inside a gun-carrying bicycle which is the first one I have seen in a museum, I have to say myself. I do want to not just congratulate the committee who made it all possible and the architect, but everyone associated with it, including those who designed the museum and took to such high curatorial standards. I think this, this area is an area that where I think people will regularly hear, and correctly so, of the courage and determination of people like Tom Barry and Liam DC of their commanding of the Kilmichael and the Cross Mary ambushes, and many actions of the volunteers of the West Cork Brigade, noted as one of the most active brigades during that time. It is well known as you know, in the Civil War, my own family was divided with my two uncles, one of my uncles in the National Army, taking over Rinmore Barracks at, 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 when the British left, but also my father, who was a member of the Cork No. 2 Brigade, operating out of Charleville, and who later was on the other side of the Civil War, and who was spent some 1923 in the Curragh. But I think this Cork 
is it right I have been speaking at Bainham Law at the Michael B. Kubota and Michal Akunyan at the Michael Collins. I was so honoured to be asked to deliver it in this special year of 2016, but also to say how important it is that we are all able uh, to move on incapacitated, but actually made powerful because of our ability to be able to see the stories of all the different sides in that terrible civil war itself. But the war of independence, we must always remember, in many cases, you wouldn't have a president of Ireland standing in an independence stadium if it hadn't been for the war of independence and for those 1916 who sacrificed so much. And we must never forget that. Uh, this region of Cork ha has a very important part in Ireland's revolutionary period. And it's important as well. You'll see inside witness statements of what it was like, what people remember. You'll see wonderful architects. And let us never forget something else. The first thing I saw in there is one of the very first I saw of a huge meeting in Macroom between the, uh, the labour between the, the labour and land workers. That is the, the people who were from the small farms and the people who were, were agricultural labourers meeting together in the square in McCroom. This is your history, this is the history of your ancestors, and it is very, very important. The development of the former museum and its expansion into a new museum and cultural centre is such a significant enhancement of the earlier initiative, demonstrating a commitment to the preservation and important part of our national heritage. More than 20 years ago, I was Minister for Heritage, among other things, but really, heritage is in the ownership of the people. It is your story. And the more that you preserve it, the better it is. The better it is. And the more that will be added to it, the nuances that will be put in it. So, Maruk, Rana, here in this more pleasure of Hogan Shetam. Now, how can you show a con your Hogan Popelia Kaya? Con Lahara Crow in a fatal look, Kangri and a flesh and arm at our culture. It's few more you hit the Bastiano, other Hogan, and the staff. Dodging Ernos and Vesimsha, a quidding lintish can the leo or our star corrigent. The artifacts which are held here have such many, many items. They relate indeed, as I said, to military uniforms, equipment, and documents, but they also include other things. And what I think is very important is that people, it is the ordinary implements that people use for the ordinary tasks of living that are sometimes forgotten. And these are very, very important. The ordinary, the mundane, is sometimes is in fact what tells us most. I think it is so many of the artifacts here are very significant. The complete kitchen of Antahar Padre Lera, the GA related memorabilia, all of that is important. And also something is very important to realise that when you're looking at the artifacts, that the people had great rows with each other. For example, Antahar Padre Lera. <coughs> Uh, uh, tried to censor Dr. Stahita when he wrote his, about his trip to America, Mahrosk America. He thought that it wasn't respectful enough for the bishops to Douglas Hyde met in America. Well, all of this is very, very important. So, those of you, there are still a few older than myself, who remember Shana, you can look at into her father's kitchen. Not that he ever boiled many eggs in it, I would say. <laughs> now, there's a very, very new audiovisual space that is very, very important, and that will be very, very, that will enable you to do so much, because you'll be able to add new material into the Museum and Cultural <laughs> Centre. But it's important, it's important for me to say, it began with Terence McSweeney and it began with the people who have donated so much to it. The original Terence McSweeney Museum, which have moved on and now it's integrated into this very valuable repository here. It's a great act of citizenship. I so congratulate you on what you have achieved as a great purposeful act of citizenship. And I'm delighted to see so many people of all ages all gathered here, totally undefeated by the inclement weather, to celebrate something that is very important, the integration of a wonderful original idea, honouring a great man and a great family with a sparkling new facility which will serve you in future generations very well. I congratulate you on it. It's Bab Banak and Tao Ki. It's got a mere mahafi of station from Thank you.
Thanks very much, Mr. President. And now I would like to call on Anthony Sullivan to thank the President formally, please. Mr. President, our fathers, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, this day had a very long dawn. There were times I thought it would never happen, but it did. And that's what we are celebrating here today. It's over 50 years ago since Pat Sheehan, whose family are with us today, Father Don O'Manny, whose niece is our current secretary, Don O'Bukla, on whose site and on whose land who donated the site for that building today. Uh, Dan Holland, who passed away just 12 months ago, and was, we were hoping that he would stay with us and be here on this day, but they have called him ashore for better reasons. Uh, I, my John Howard, whose son is our chairman here today, and I suppose last but not least, Mary O'Sullivan, who was lucky enough to have me as a son. <laughs> they, because they planted the seed up there in that little building up the village, nurtured it as much as they could, but there was there is one man who I have to mention, that was Pat Sheen's son, John Sheen, who for 40 years kept that and kept those artifacts inside in that little building as safe as he could from dampness and dust and everything else. Another man, also his wife, Friday. His wife, Friday, gave me assisting him. And as I said, when you sow, you must reap. So that brings me to the reapers. Now, in the gospel it says, the harvest was great and the laborers were few. The harvest was great, but the laborers were plentiful. And they're critical here today, as you can see them scattered around there. A lot of them in high this jackets, a lot more of them not. But any time anything was needed in this village, the community stood behind us and never left us down. Never left us down. It was the dream of those who planted the first seed up there to build a new museum. And that dream has gone on for over 50 years. That's why I, that's why I said this day had a long dawn. But now the dawn has broken. Our new committee, who were formed about 10 years ago, took, I suppose, grabbed the metal and said, also said no, but Kilmore said yes. <laughs> they strove through tough times they were called in all hours of the week in the day to meetings that was no how. Our chairman, our then secretary Bridget Golding, our inside lane to West Cock leader Tony Murphy, our curator today, Terms McSweeney. Now there are many more on the outside, but they were the main protagonists, and to them we owe a big debt. So around you. Just to come to the end of this little bit of a rant, uh, uh, most historical day for the village, made more so by the attendance of the President of Ireland, President Michael D. Higgins here today. Uh, on behalf of Kilmory, Historical and Archaeological Association, I would like to make a presentation to the President now. This is, this is a painting of the museum painted by a local artist, Jack Cornhouse. Thank you, Jack. Ashton McCarthy will make a presentation as well. 
we were delighted that the President of Ireland came here. The last time a, a President of Ireland came here officially was in 1963 when Eamon de Valera visited the village here officially for the funeral of Sean O'Hagerty, who was commanding officer of the, Third West Co of the First Cork Brigade, who succeeded Terence McSweeney. That's the last time a President officially came to this village. So we were honoured indeed that he came and we also feel that this Independence Museum in Kilmore is, is geographically well centred because it's equidistant more or less between Bandon, McCroom and Dunmanway, as well as Bell and Colleg and Cork City and so on. And it's very historic because here during the War of Independence there was a, a very, a, a, an ambush here in the Sarda where Michael Gallivan was shot there during it. Also there was the burning of Warden's Court and Roy Court houses, great houses, and tragically also on the 22nd of August 1922, the Michael Collins convoy passed through this village going from McCroom to West Cork. So, and there's a, a very um, rich archaeological heritage here also, and we feel that this museum is not here by accident, that is geographically well centred and historically well centred as well. It was called Terence McSweeney Museum. Originally it was that his parents were born here in Kilmore, but they felt after 50 odd years that it was time for a change, not taking from it. But uh, it was felt that uh, a more neutral name, a more, shall we say, generic name, might be suitable in the modern age of the internet and so on. So they decided on the Independence Museum Kilmore, not particularly the War of Independence, but they felt that independence has a more generic connotation, not particularly the War of Independence, so they decided on that then. And um, the, the main, the, the one of the most maybe populist and the most interesting artifacts here, one of them, is one of the wheels of the crusty tinders that was in Kinmoyle ambush the burnt out crusty tinder it is here. There's a lot of artifacts here, but that might be one that people might be attracted to. As well as the famine pot here that was in the soup soup kitchens during the famine. You know, this is the kitchen here of Tarpadro Lera. But all the artefacts are of equal importance, but maybe people might be inclined to look at them.